see if this sounds familiar. The songs are all picked. Your band spent an hour, maybe two, getting everything ready for the weekend service. And then you get word that your bass player has to cancel at the last minute. And now you're trying to figure out how do you press on without them? What do you do? I asked a worship leader Facebook group this question, and I'm gonna share with you some of their suggestions. They're pretty great. Hi, I'm Dave Dolphin at practicalworshipblog.com, sharing ideas, tips, and practical advice for the worship leader that has to do it all. If you're trying to figure out how to do all the little extra things that comes with leading a worship ministry, hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell right next to it, and we'll be here to help every single week. So here's where we're at. You lead a worship band on acoustic. You have also a drummer, a bass player, an electric guitar player, and a keys player. Everything is ready, or at least it was ready, until your bass player texts you late Saturday night saying that they are gonna have to miss, they have a family emergency. And you don't get their text message until Sunday morning, and so there is no time to find a replacement. You have a one hour rehearsal to make any adjustments, and then it's time for service. That's the hypothetical situation that I posed to the Worship Leaders Plus Facebook group, and they had some pretty good ideas. This video is specific on what to do if you're missing your bass player. In a previous video, we talked about what to do if you're missing your drummer. In upcoming videos, we'll talk about electric guitar and keys. There is a playlist that I'll put together with all of these videos that I'll share at the end of this video so you can catch up on the whole series. Alex says, tell the keyboard player to fill out the low end and play bass-like lines if he or she is able to. If you're able to program a synth based sound for the bottom half of your keyboard in a short amount of time, even better. You know, we're always telling our keyboard players to not play in that lower part of their keyboard because that muddies up what the bass player is doing and you're kind of getting in their way. So this is their moment to shine. They can actually take advantage of the whole keyboard and we need them right now. They're the hero. And it makes me think of the band, The Doors. If you're not familiar with The Doors, they were a band in the 60s and the 70s and they didn't have a bass player. Instead, their keyboard player or their organ player had a separate device, a separate keyboard that kind of made bass-like sounds and that's just how they did life that was just the makeup of the band he would play all of the bass lines with his left hand and then play organ on the right matt says hand your acoustic player a bass and tell him to keep it simple realistically a bass is more important than two guitars and 90 percent of guitar players will be able to do okay for a service this whole exercise whether the instrument is bass or drums or keys or whatever is about prioritizing what is the cake what is the fundamentals that we need to make these songs work for this Sunday and then what's the icing that gives it its flavor. If you've got drums in your band, you have to have bass. Unless of course you're the artist formerly known as Prince. He did have some songs in the 80s where there wasn't a bass part, but he did manipulate the drums to kind of fill in that section. Anyone else if you've got drums, you need bass. The bass guitar, besides being what locks down that lower end of the sonic space, is what is tying the rhythm of the drums to the melodicness of all the other instruments in the band. So I think this is a great suggestion to move things around to find out what's most ideal for your situation. If you don't feel like those songs need acoustic, but they need electric guitar, then move your acoustic to the bass. If you feel like you can do more of an acoustic set and get rid of the electric guitar and put him on bass, I can see that. But if you have drums, you need bass, and I can see sacrificing one of the other guitars to make this happen. Brandon says, if there's an acoustic guitar, and depending on your mixer, either run the instrument output of their direct box into the soundboard into its own channel, creating two acoustic guitar channels, or do a send from the mixer channel into another channel, then EQ the channel to sound like a bass. So essentially what you're doing is you're making two copies of the same thing on the acoustic guitar, but then you're treating each one differently. One you're treating like a bass guitar and one you're treating like an acoustic. This is a really interesting idea. I've never tried this personally, but I think if you had the right people, uh, that knew how to kind of manipulate an acoustic and to make it really fill up that space with the, uh, like a bass guitar normally would. This is a pretty solid idea. I'd say get the electric to play bass if he or she is capable. Keys can pick up on lead line melodies, but you still want to have the freedom to lead with an acoustic for down moments. Drums need 
bass. This is what I was saying beforehand. Drums and bass together, the sum is greater than the parts. And again, this is about priorities. If you're looking at your set or your style of worship or just what works for you, and you need that acoustic to be able to do the down moments, well then you might sacrifice your electric guitar player and move them to bass. If you feel like you have a bunch of songs that really need the edge and the grit that the electric guitar is gonna bring, and the acoustic, which is kind of the case for our band, the acoustic becomes more of a melodic tambourine, and those down moments might be able to be carried with the piano player, well then you might sacrifice the acoustic for the bass. But regardless, drums and bass, one plus one equals three. Ryan says, have your front of house engineer play from the booth. I've definitely heard of this. In fact, our media director here at the church at Cherokee Hills before I got here, there was many times that he would be running sound and also playing bass back at the soundboard. Bass is one of those things that I don't necessarily need to see it, I just need to be able to hear it and feel it. There are some instruments like drums or maybe the melodic lines of guitars that if I don't see them, it's a little jarring, but there are other things that you can tuck in there that, and a bass guitar is one of them, where I, I don't need to see it in order for the whole thing to make sense, unless I am a band nerd and I know that there's no bass player, but I hear it. But for most people in your congregation, they're not associating, I, I hear a bass guitar, but I don't see it. Like they would if they heard drums and didn't see it, or a guitar lead lick line and not being able to see it. Seth says, you leave it open. Not only in a vacuum can someone step up to fill, but usually that's when someone sees a need and tries to fill. Let it be open. Let the absence of the bass be noticed. When someone talks to you about it, that's your chance to raise up a new person. I firmly believe in this practice and have seen God move the right people time and time again at just the right time because of the vacuum. So this is interesting. I, I don't know if I could do this. I think maybe because I'm a one on the Enneagram and I don't know if I could leave it wrong for an entire set, but, but Seth, I mean, he's speaking truth. I've definitely had people approach me because they didn't see something on stage. Maybe they are a musician. They heard the bass track, but they didn't see a bass guitar. They know better. They see the need. They've stepped up. There might be other moments where maybe I don't do the electric guitar. That becomes more the icing, and that's not necessarily like leaving it wrong. It's just changing the kind of the vibe of the song, but someone steps up and says, hey, I noticed you didn't have an electric guitar player. Do you need more people? I definitely, in this, the principle in general, I think is huge, where sometimes you just, let it be, and there are those moments where people step in, fill that vacuum. It might be people on your own team. It might be people that see it from the congregation that you would have never known existed until you ha they had the reason to walk up to you and say, hey, I noticed this is missing. It's something I can do. Do you need the help? Brian says, if you're running tracks, bass is one of the best things to add in with tracks if you're missing a player. Other instruments, like guitars and keys, play so many melodic parts that it can be weird if they're tracked and nobody is playing guitar or piano. But bass is one that can be tracked in without people in the congregation really noticing. We actually track the bass at our church quite a bit. There are some Sundays where we have a live bass player, but probably more times than not, we are using a tracked bass, and then we have other people like guitar players and piano players that are on the stage. When it comes to music, I think some things are heard and some things are felt, and bass is definitely more of one of the things that is felt than is seen. It's necessary. You got to have bass in that mix, but I don't necessarily need to see it represented on the stage for my brain to make sense of it in terms of I see a band on stage and I hear it. Are they are they gelling? That that Brian, that Brian knows a thing or two. Someone needs to encourage him to start a YouTube channel or something. Now, this is the second of several videos where I am posing this hypothetical situation, and I'll put all of them as we create them in this playlist right over here. That video down there, it's pretty good as well. Either one you pick, I'll see you in the next one.